this gathering. Uh, my name is Karthik Narayan Sharma and I head growth and strategy at Sunshore Energy. I'm going to take you through our perspective on uh, a very, very important topic uh, which, is, which seems to have been left out largely by this conference which is uh, on the grid stability side. So I'll start out by telling you guys a little bit about Sunshore and what we do. So we are a pure play EPC company and uh, we deal with commercial and industrial rooftop plants as well as uh, utility scale uh, plants. We've also worked on uh, an open access ground mounted project which is a 5.5 megawatt captive project with trackers in Haryana and is uh, largely the first of its kind in uh, the state. Overall, we are uh, running towards a 40 megawatt installed capacity by the end of this financial year. And uh, you can see some of our uh, most uh, prestigious customers right here on this slide. What we want to do as a, as a company is to basically, you know, accelerate India's transition to a renewable energy prime nation. And we are targeting to install close to two gigawatts uh, by 2022. We, we intend on doing this by putting both large scale ground mounted and commercial and industrial rooftop plants, as well as, uh, you know, provide world class operations and maintenance uh, to these. The team is, uh, we are a team uh, consisting primarily of IIT and IIM alumni, it started in 2014. And now we are a team of over 60 uh, engineers and financial experts with over 500 megawatts of cumulative experience. Something uh, that I came across at the beginning of uh, this financial year and was probably one of the best graphs that I've seen all of this year was, you know, the parity of uh, renewable energy capacity addition with thermal capacity addition last year. So this is a major landmark, uh, you know, for our country where, you know, this, after this financial year, we're really running towards becoming a renewable energy prime nation. Now, this clearly is a disruption, and uh, with all disruptions, there is, you know, a certain thing, a certain few things that industry folks need to do in order to tame it, in order to make sure that, you know, uh, the country smoothly transitions off. So I'm just putting down here the top four, that according to us. Number one is, of course, creating high quality assets and that's what this gathering is all about. Mr. Gautam spoke about, you know, how, what is the cutting edge in solar modules, then we've heard on inverters from Huawei. Of course, DuPont has been a company which has been continuously uh, supporting uh, all kinds of uh, technology disruptions over 100 plus years. And um, the next thing and the next biggest challenge which, you know, all other nations in the world are facing, especially America and Europe, is grid integration of these intermittent power producing assets like solar and wind. Then for our country, as we all know, and we've all heard about this as well, you know, even in terms of standards from uh, Amrish ji, that, uh, you know, the, the Indian context on development of technology in the world is largely missing, right? And we really need to foster research and innovation for the Indian context, keeping uh, both of these things, creating high quality assets as well as great integration in our minds. And the fourth and a very, very crucial point is human capital. One thing that all of, all of us, uh, especially, you know, all companies which are doing EPC in the country face is the lack of trained human capital. We, we find a lot of people who know how to, you know, do work at the site, which is, uh, you know, run of the mill work. But when it comes to really thinking for themselves and figuring out new innovative ways of cutting down costs at the field and during the design phase, that's, that's one place where we are seriously lacking talent. Also in the operations and maintenance field, there is a serious lack of human capital. Another place where you know, human capital is key is the analytics in, uh, solar power, uh, in the solar power industry. So just to take you guys through, of, uh, through, through the vision that we have as a company, uh, we are currently focusing on creating sustainable energy assets, maximizing the energy generation from these assets and reducing the operating costs. This largely is also a reflection of what the entire industry is focusing on right now. But what we really need for the future in order to make our country a green energy driven nation is to increase the reliability of these assets that we are putting up. There are so many questions even on, you know, the warranty life of panels and inverters and most of the BOS components. And then the last one is to enable flexibility and control. Why thermal power plants and uh, you know, nuclear power plants and the such were such a, pow such a powerful and such a popular uh, choice for the past were because of the flexibility and control that these plants offered. 
for renewable energy assets to really offer the kind of flexibility and control that matches and you know gives a tough uh, real challenge to these conventional sources of energy we are going to need energy storage and smarter grids i'll talk a little bit more about uh, you know this uh, smart grid in the next slide so in this slide i want to present you know what we feel is uh, the grid of the future number one is primarily distributed energy resources which is you know uh, rooftop solar uh, solar plus storage uh, hybrid wind and solar and um, so on a lot of you know biogas and uh, so on uh, but basically turning the current energy paradigm on its head from a centralized uh, model to a decentralized model the next thing very very crucial to really decentralizing energy production is energy storage and then the the third and very very important field uh, uh, or, or cog in this wheel is electric vehicles and charging infrastructure 70% of our urban pollution is owed to transportation and not to uh, you know power production and to improve the quality of life especially all of us are sitting in delhi right last year was terrible for uh, the city i myself suffered and you know this is something which is very very close to our hearts at sanchor as well we really really want to you know bring down this uh, level of pollution in the in the country and evs and charging infrastructure is the way forward in order to really make an impact there and the last one here that i want to talk about is network security and resilience we have uh, all all the power production uh, that we are doing now is you know all of those infrastructure is very very smart huawei has really changed the game with you know bringing in inverters which can now you know allow you to do uh, iv curve testing and so on from uh, you know remotely which was earlier a very very uh, uh, or still is a, an extremely tedious task so with all of this smartness and all of this communication you know being recorded from our energy infrastructure and will also this will also percolate in the evs and so on we need to work a lot on the security of these networks a lot of you guys have must have uh, you know heard about blockchain and its applications in in energy that is also you know one of those uh, technologies which is really going to help us create a more resilient and secure network of how our nation uses uh, and produces its energy so these four things is uh, you know according to us uh, the the most important uh, uh, cogs in the wheel to create you know the grid of the future and uh, these are things that we are really really focusing on as a company so with this i would like to end my uh, speech and uh, thank you so much for being here thank you thank you kartik and then i will ask pradeep if you can have the last uh, presentations you know thank you